Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. Today I am going to transform something that was headed to the trash into a treasure. Let's get started. So I bought this welcome sign from Michael's a year ago, hung it out. After a year, it faded to the point where I could not hang it out. I was gonna peel off the letters and just use them. That's my plan B. But I thought, let's give it a try. I'm going to overpaint these sunflowers. So they're ugly, they're faded, but I can use that as the base and overpaint with my acrylic paints. Now I had already put a coat of varnish on this to protect it. So I'm gonna put a coat of clear gesso just to prepare it. I'm thinking I just need to do something to make it stick. And then I'm just getting out my various colors. I've got quinacridone magenta, I've got yellow oxide, and I'm going to overpaint, use the kind of outline of the sunflowers and paint them. Now this sunflower on the bottom and the one that you see that I've already done, I am just taking the paint and mixing it, a little bit of yellow oxide, a little bit of magenta to get the various colors that sunflowers come in. I'm not really particularly worried about whatever color it was underneath because, well, that's faded and gone. So I get to remake this my way. Now, as I'm putting this on, I, when you're looking at it here, a lot of the detail is gone. But remember, we're going to come back and add highlights and shades and bring it to life. And really, this sunflower right here is the worst one. As I go, I'm figuring it out, what I would do, and in a minute I'm gonna show you what I would do instead of just putting the acrylic paint right on top. Now this one's kind of squished, and you know, truthfully, when, by the time it's all done, it looks just fine. But we're gonna add a lot of detail. I like using an angle brush. I find it gets into nooks and crannies, and it gives me a lot of control as opposed to a flat brush. And again, my when I buy brushes, I'm not buying particularly high-end or expensive ones. This one comes from Michaels. Now for the center of the sunflower, I'm adding a little bit of black to the burgundy. Now, I'm just mixing the colors as I go. I'm adding a little bit of yellow oxide in there. I want variation because that's what really really matters. So if you've got a sign that is faded, that you don't like the colors, try what I'm doing on this sign. It's well worth it. Sometimes you can get those at Dollar Tree and the colors just aren't what you want, but you can remake it and make it exactly the shades that you want with the tips. Putting the clear gesso on absolutely worked here. To take off that shine that was on the sign. I've had no problems with the paint chipping or coming off. Now I've painted the leaf, but again, with that leaf I have, it's hooker's green and I'm mixing in that yellow oxide. That yellow oxide I mix into all the various colors and that helps make a nice tone. Now here, I start painting the leaves and I'm getting out some gesso, white gesso this time, and I'm painting on them. And it occurs to me that I can give whatever pattern is there a coat of white gesso first and then use basically the outline and fill that in. And I'm really liking that effect better than just putting the paint on top. So that's what I continue doing. Here again, I'm putting gesso with my angle brush on top, and then I'm gonna come back in with the colors. And by muting whatever was there, even though it's faded, I'm able to get better co coverage and better colors are going to shine through. They're not as dark. You'll see me putting white gesso on the tips of the sunflower. And then when I put the color on, that 
allows those colors to be brighter. Now this one I'm mixing the yellow oxide with a little, little, little bit of the magenta. So each sunflower, I'm changing the tone from yellow to yellow gold to yellow rose to more burgundy. But because the same basic colors are being used, that all works together. And quite honestly, you can just have a lot of fun with this and not worry about it. I could have painted them all yellow if I had wanted. And if you're going with a very light color like that, you definitely want to put the white gesso on top first so that you make sure that it's going to be bright. You can see my palette. I've just got all the colors there and I'm pulling a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And again, I'm trying to keep the shapes of the petals, but I know I'm going to come back in, I'm going to shade and highlight and add that. Here I'm going on, I'm adding a little bit of that yellow on that dark, dark, dark burgundy sunflower just to make it a little bit more interesting. Now again, I approached this, I said, I already had a plan B. I was going to peel off those letters and use them on a different porch sign. But I'm really glad that I attempted to save this because I loved the sign. Here I'm putting on the white gesso in the center, knocking back that dark, and then coming in with the center. Now a lot of this, I am not keeping the, all the footage because you don't need to watch me do all of it. I'm basically following the same step. I'm putting the gesso, the white gesso on there, and then the color, and then I'm coming in and adding shading with either the black or the dark burgundy, making these sunflowers whatever color I want. The colors are bright, they're vibrant. And about now I was very, very happy with where this was going. Now these letters are wood that have been glued on, but you can buy letter stencils that are this size to go on top of. And I'm going to do some porch signs where I'm going to do that. I'm going to start from scratch and make some porch signs. I want a porch sign for each season at the very least. So I painted in the center. This time I painted it yellow. And here I'm doing the leaves, first with the gesso, and then coming back in with the mixed colors. Another place you might get a sign like this, you might get this at the thrift store, somebody has sent it in, and it's faded and old. I'm using some bubble wrap with black acrylic paint to get the center of the sunflower. Loving that effect. Now this fern leafy thing, I'm using my liner brush, I'm thinning the paint, and I'm just painting it in. Now that, I believe I mixed a dark green here. And I'm just overpainting it. And I'm not too worried about making it exact. One, people look at this from afar, they're not up close. And two, they don't know what it was. Just do one lent pet flower at a time, one leaf at a time, just step by step. I do what I think is easiest first, and then as I gain confidence and figure out what I'm doing, I'm happy. Those leaves had turned this slightly teal color that just didn't belong. 
So I'm really liking the hooker's green with the yellow oxide mix in there. Much, much better. And I'm even adding leaves as I go, altering the overall sign. And coming in with some shading here. Brayering on some paint and then using the bubble wrap to get those that center. Loved how that detail worked out. In the end, you'll get pictures of the whole sign so you can see all the flowers and how that works and all the colors. I've even um, already hung out my autumn wreath, sunflower wreath, that goes so really so well with this sign. I really love fall and sunflowers, so this was just a complete win for me. Here's the yellow, the sunflower. I'm keeping some light centers. I did some dark. Now this overpainting technique is something that I've developed over time by painting over napkins, making it more painterly and making it more my own as opposed to just decoupaging the napkins down. And so you can see that on a lot of my art journal pages where I use napkins. So if you don't wanna start with a sign, try it with a napkin. What have you got to lose? The key was is having a lot of variation in the colors that really brought this whole sign into life. And because again, I've used the yellow oxide and basically the yellow oxide, white gesso, quinacridone magenta throughout, and I've mixed them to get different tones. So they all go together because they all come from the same basic colors. My color palette is very limited. Now, when I was done, I did give this two coats of my Win Min Wax Polycrylic Varnish. Hopefully, and I'm sure that it will because I've put things that I've painted in the sun and they have lasted definitely longer than one season. Rearing on and sunflower center. And I wasn't too ha worried about making it just perfect on that circle. And there we can see all the various ones. Now the letters didn't seem to go so well. I needed more contrast with what I had because the colors were so vibrant. So I decided I'm just going to paint it and I mix the black with brown to get a very dark brown which matches kind of the trim of my house and then I just painted those wooden letters to to be darker and I think I like that contrast a whole lot better you could have painted those any color if you, you know, you'll see later, I'm, I hang it and I've painted my front door blue. I could have made it blue and that would have worked as well, I think. Now, if you were putting this sign from scratch and you had wooden letters, you would paint them before you glued them down. That would make, make it easier. Now 
and I just go letter by letter down the run, down the way. And you can see as I'm painting the letters all the different sunflowers. Now they're far from perfect, I tell you that. Because I know as, as artists, as creators, we we look at what we're doing and we go, oh, but it's not right, it's not. But when you're looking at mine, you're saying, oh, that looks great. Karen did a great job. Hold it away, look at it from afar. What do you think of the darker letters? Do you agree that that works better? I think because I put the dark centers like the, with the bubble wrap in the middle of the sunflowers, that I needed the darker. And there we go. It is all painted. Once it's dry, gave it a couple coats of varnish. And there's the sign. You can see all the sunflowers, all the different colors that I was able to achieve. Here I'm getting ready to set it outside. And there, there I've painted my blue door. What do you think of the blue door? I think, well, I love it. I hope you do too. I hope you go find something and turn some trash into treasure. Go get creative.